Hello and welcome to this colour workshop with me, Heather Prince, also known on social media as The Root Master. And I've also co-authored recently a coffee table book called Vibe, which is all about the effect of colour in the world today. As I've said, um, I'm known as the root master because I get to the core root of someone's issue. I've been a meditation teacher of about 30 years and I specialise in clearing the Akashic records and ancestral shadows. And as I've just said, I co-authored Vibe with my colleague Jo Baldwin Trott. And on a personal level, I'm a proud mum of three and a grandma to eight. is a colour workshop about how colour can raise your vibe. Different colours have quite literally different vibrations. In terms of our surroundings and our wardrobe, what we are drawn to is the energetics we feel we need at the moment. And while each person interactions and experiences with each wavelength differ, there's generally a universal quality to colour. So let's discover everyone's favourite colour. So let's check in with everyone and let's see what each of your favourite colour is. So thanks very much for sharing what your favourite colour is. And the question now is, are your colour choices 
inspired by nature? You know, is it a fallen leaf or a peacock feather or the inside of a shell or perhaps from a bouquet of flowers or something else? So we are an energy vibration. When you're vibrating at a higher level, you feel lighter, happier, and more at ease. Whereas lower vibrations feel heavy, dark, and confused. Almost all spiritual traditions point the way toward higher realms of consciousness. So today we will learn what colors help with mental health and the best color for happiness and what is the highest energy and how you can increase your vibration and whether it's what you wear or what you eat or the colors in your surroundings. So I'd like to check in with you all again with We've discovered what your favourite colour is, but what colours do you actually wear? I mean, do you wear red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple or, or something else?
So we've discovered what colour your favourite is. We've discovered what colour you choose to wear. And now let's go round and see what colours are in your home and how do they make you feel? Is your home mainly grey or white or has lots of black in it or green, blue, yellow or something else? So what do you see when you look at that picture? Because colours can influence our mood and equally reflect our personality. But when it comes to decorating the home, what are the best colours? Upbeat and friendly, yellow is the colour of happiness. And sunlight, it's also reported to cause the release of serotonin, a neurotransmitter chemical that contributes to a feeling of well-being. So scientifically speaking, it's the best colour to lift the spirits, to boost your vibe and to use it to evoke feelings of joy and happiness. Have you heard of colour theory and colour psychology? Now, colour theory is the idea that the colours a person is surrounded with can have an effect on the person's health, whether physical or mental. And colour psychology is based on the idea that the colours a sighted person is exposed to can have an effect on that person's emotions and even on the individual's health. And some of the concepts of colour theory and colour psychology include that purple enhances creativity and spirituality, that blues and greens create a calming atmosphere, that orange and yellow can stimulate appetite, and red inspires passion, power, and energy. So what do you think is the best colour for happiness?
So all of those that said yellow, you were right. But also happy colors are bright warm colors like yellow, orange, pink and red. And pastel colors like peach, light pink or lilac can also have an uplifting effect on your mood. So now that we've discussed all of that, what colour cuisine can we rely on the most to put a spring in our step and a smile on our faces? survey which was conducted by Green and Black's Organic Thin which has revealed that the colour of food really does have an effect on how much we enjoy it and how it makes us feel with seven in ten Brits agreeing that the colour of food seems to enhance its taste. So the answer as you can see from these pictures is red and 60% of those surveyed agreed that red is the most enticing colour of food and one in four said it made them feel happy. What colour do you think has the highest energy? Congratulations to everyone that said violet, mauve, purple, they're all similar. Um, so violet is the highest energetic colour. And that relates to the colour of the crown chakra, which is balanced on the top of your head and opens you up to the wisdom and knowledge of the universe. Depending on what you want to focus on in your life, you can choose colours to surround yourself with and wear in order to raise your vibration and attract 
your wishes. So if you want to create a stronger spiritual connection, then wearing violet and adding it to your surroundings can help achieve that intention. And if you desire more awareness and creativity, then you can place the colour indigo around your home, in your car and or on your person. And the colour blue can be worn to help boost your communication and decisiveness. Greens and pinks can help with relationship harmony because our hearts give and receive love from and to us. And green flows from within you outwards to people and places. And pink is a very common colour that appears in the heart chakra and can help with inner love issues and peace. They help you with projecting wisdom and power during a work presentation or a sales pitch. Orange can boost emotions and intimacy with your partner. And red may help with feeling more secure, safe and grounded. Now in Vibe, we talk about colour personality with an expert from the colour ministry called Alison Standish who asks, you know, what is your colour personality and then gives you the, the sum to do it. So we're all very interested in who we are and how we interact with each other on this planet. And the numbers in your date of birth determine your colour personality. And each number is added up and then added together again until you are left with one single digit. And each number then relates to an individual colour. So if you've got um, a piece of paper now and a pen, and let's say, for example, your birthday is the 6th of January, 1958, you'd do six plus one, plus one, plus nine, plus five, plus eight, and that would add up to 30. And then you would add up the three plus zero, which is three, and three would be the color personality of yellow. So let's go round and see what yours is. Now, if you've got one, it would be red, which means that you're active, you're cheerful, you're optimistic. Two is orange, charming, optimistic, fun loving. Three is yellow, which is happy, cheerful and fun. Four is green, which is a voice of reason and faith and new solutions. Five is blue emotional intensity and spirituality. Six is indigo, which is authority, structure and loyalty. Seven is violet, which is inspiration, new ideas and empaths. Eight is magenta, unconventional, unique, warm, agreeable. Nine is gold, responsible, dependable and authentic. And all those results you can find on page 101 in Vibe. And I'll give you an example of somebody that you all may know, Arlene Phillips. She was born on the 22nd of May, 1943. And she's got a magenta personality, which shows that she is constantly transforming herself. Magenta is the performer and her aspirations are also magenta, giving her a double dose of that power and her inner child is green, allowing her to help support both sides in any discussion, and her blue skills give her a healing quality to her voice that will support others. Now, as you can see, quite a few colours come up there, which is where Alison Standish comes in, and you can contact her at the Colour Ministry, and all of those details are in Vibe. So let's look at colour and healing. The use of colour to help people heal goes back to the ancient Greeks, the Egyptians and Chinese, all of whom used colour to try to affect the mental states of people through the colours used to decorate rooms 
the incorporation of natural colours to induce a calm state and the use of light to balance mental states. In fact, for at least one condition, seasonal affective disorder or SAD, research is showing light therapy can help to mitigate the depression and anxiety caused by the disorder and there's more about that in Vibe on page 86. We share in the book about chromotherapy and it has been discovered that red would help a person struggling with melancholy to become more animated and involved in the environment while how blue or green would calm someone who was agitated and this is the historical basis behind colour therapy or chromotherapy. Red stimulates and energises, it boosts the immune system and raises blood pressure. Orange treats muscle cramps, yellow speeds up digestion, blue calms down inflammation, indigo restores the body into functioning well, green stimulates the pituitary gland, violet reduces pain and swelling and you can find all of this on page 88 in Vibe. So regarding mental health the colour green is quiet and restful and green is a soothing colour that can invite harmony and diffuse anxiety. Blue is a highly peaceful colour and blue can be especially helpful for stress management because it can encourage a powerful sense of calm. And purple in many cultures, shades of violet represent strength, wisdom and peace. And there's more about cultures in Vibe. Now let's have a look at crystals which were used by the Greeks, Romans, Egyptians, Chinese and Indian in Ayurveda. The healing methodologies rely on the vibrations of the stones involved. So lapis lazuli was prized even more than gold and was buried with the dead due to its protective energies. And peridot, the green stone, was sought to endow protection on the wearer. And malachite, also a green stone, was respected for its grounding influence and was even powdered for use in makeup. And emeralds were considered to be a gift from the god of wisdom, Thoth. So I'm going to share with you, just for information purposes, about crystal healing for marijuana addiction. And it's been found that carnelian, which is orange, is one of the best crystals to help somebody that would like to quit. It's a vibrant orange and anyone recovering from this addiction knows that low mood and lack of energy are serious problems that can get in the way of reclaiming your life. And the crystal can inspire users to live life to the fullest. It can also help bring positivity after a swing into depressive feelings. Here's a picture of azurite. So we've spoken about carnelian, which is often used in conjunction with this one that you can see now, azurite. And the blue stone is believed to help stimulate the mind and open pathways to new forms of perception and perspectives. It may also help attempts to let go of negative emotions such as stress, anxiety, and sadness, making it a good crystal to soothe the mind before bed. And these qualities together can help people clear their minds and focus on learning or applying healing tools. And here's a picture of a really well-known crystal, which is a lovely purple color, amethyst. And the Greek word for amethyst translates to not drunk. And it's a good crystal for all types of addiction. And the Greeks used to say that by keeping an amethyst in your mouth, you could drink all night and still stay sober. I don't know how true that is. But while this is undoubtedly an extreme story, many people have stories of the clear-headed calmness 
bestowed by this purple crystal. And amethyst is also associated with divine wisdom, which helps stop powerful cravings and make smart decisions. And here's a picture of celestite, and that's thought to have a powerfully soothing aura, which can help manage the stress that often precedes cravings for alcohol. And it may also promote communication for you to share how you truly feel. The most common and simple way to benefit from crystals is to place them on your person or carry them with you in a purse, wallet or pocket. And jewellery made with crystals can provide you with the reassuring feeling of having the energy in near direct contact with your skin and allows you to benefit from the healing influences wherever you go. So I'd like to share with you today what you can do. So regarding colour, you could start a Pinterest board. You could choose images of things that inspire you for the use of colour. I mean, for somebody that loves the mountains, look at that picture. There's the sun with that golden tint on the mountain, which is kind of a charcoaly colour. You've got that blue sky there, that beautiful sky blue with, you know, a couple of clouds which are a bit grey, a bit charcoaly as well. And there you've got the reflection of the mountains in that turquoise water with that deep fur green of the trees and the colour of the stone. So all of that, can you imagine if you put that into a bathroom or you put that into your lounge area or a bedroom, how that would make you feel as if you're in that space of that beautiful turquoise water surrounded by those majestic mountains. Another thing you can do is take photos of patterns or colour combinations that intrigue you. Look at this one here that is made with thread and you've got that beautiful vibrant pink magenta. You've got gorgeous like jade green and sky blue and a bit of dark indigo blue there and some orange. Look at all those shades and how the feeling that that evokes within you, you could bring that into a scheme um, that would make you feel whatever it is that those colours evoke. And you can also take photos of things that are appealing and create an inspiration board and you can pin them on there so that you can see what, you know, you really fancy. You might want to bring in some pink blossom and, and have a Japanese theme. You might want to bring in the colours of a peacock. Look at that vibrant peacock blues and greens and turquoise, it's fantastic. Or a butterfly, and here's a blue butterfly with um, you know, the light blue going into the darker blue and those dark, dark indigo edges and maybe a touch of black in there. So, you know, choose something that appeals to you. So I mentioned at the beginning that I co-wrote a book called Vibe and I was um, given the inspiration of creating this book after I'd been to see a clairvoyant who said that I should be writing a book about the effect of colour in the world today and I really didn't know how to go about it but I went to um, a meeting and the lady at the meeting did a talk about colour and image and about what you wear um, can affect how you feel about yourself and how you are confident and, and present yourself. And I mentioned to her, would she like to be part of my project? And she said she'd always, always wanted to write a book about colour. So we got together and um, over a period of time, 
we put together some segments with the help of some key contributors who are colour experts in their own right. And we created 13 segments, home, art, chakra, soul, body, personality, image, food, culture, environment, brand, nature, and future. And it was launched last November. And we have a mission that we would like this book to raise the vibe of everyone that has it in their home or holds it and dips into it and get something from it to learn how to raise their vibe. So if you'd like one, I do have them with me today and I'm happy to sign it. And on the website, they sell for 40 pounds. But if you want one today, they are 30. And I hope you've enjoyed this workshop today. And to complete it, I'd like to share with you a chakra meditation.